seeking his first win. He's pitched well on the season. There's no wins to show for. Top of the sixth, the Astros up 2-1, two, 2 gone. And Pettit gets Junior Spivey looking to end the frame. Top seven. Right three. He gets Wes Helm swinging. So Pettit, seven innings of work, five hits, three runs, five Ks. Top of the ninth, two outs, two on. Brewers down eight to four when Brady Clark gets some of them back. A three-run homer to left off Brad Lidge, of all people. His third, the Brewers down now 8-7. Next batter, Lidge gets some spiding. Swinging at the slider, so the Astros go on to win it by a final count of 8-7. to seven. Pettit gets the win. Nomar Garcia Parra out at least two to three months. Nomar suffered a terrible groin injury Thursday in St. Louis. His left groin muscle was torn away from the bone. The Cubs will decide soon whether or not he will need surgery. Steve Phillips, your thoughts. The loss of Nomar Garcia Parra for the Chicago Cubs is very significant. They lost an awful lot of offense in the offseason with the trade of Sammy Sosa and Moises Alou going to free agency. 74 home runs, 186 RBI. They were counting on Garcia Parra to add to this offense and make up some of that difference. His loss also impacts the leadership on this team. Dusty Baker talks about what a hard worker he was and what a leader he's been in such a short time for them. Has not been a good run for Garcia Parra since he won the AL batting title in 2000 after he was named to five All-Star teams from 96 to 03. He missed the first 57 games of last season with a bruised right Achilles. And last July 1st, while many of his Red Sox teammates were on the top step during a thriller against the Yankees, this is the game in which Derek Jeter went face first into the seats. Nomar sat in the dugout after saying he was not ready to play. 30 days after that, he was dealt to the Cubs. He had 297 in 43 games with Chicago to finish out the season, but the Cubs missed the playoffs. And we know what happened in the Red Sox post-Nomar world. The unthinkable, including the postseason, Boston went 53-21 and after trading Garcia Parra. Then Thursday, hitting just a buck 57 with four RBIs, it's revealed Garcia Parra will miss at least two to three months with a torn groin. Cubs with a matinee in St. Louis Thursday. Nafi Perez went two for four, filling in for Nomar at short, a temporary band-aid there. It worked out well after one day. Top eight, Chris Carpenter rings up Corey Patterson. Carpenter bidding for his sixth career shutout. Bottom eight, Mike Remlinger facing Larry Walker, and Walker wins his second home run. Cardinals have now homered in 10 straight games, 2-0 St. Louis. Next up, Albert Pujols. And we're going the other way. One hopper off the wall. Pujols, a double. He was two for four. And he's on the table for Scott Rowland, who comes up two batters later. And Rowland, who's been struggling somewhat, gets going. Two for three. Drove in three. This home run is third of the year. And it's 4 nothing Redbirds. Bullpen. Top nine. Two on, two out for the Cubs. Carpenter rings up Michael Barrett. Carpenter scattered seven hits, struck out six. His first shutouts in September of 2001. 4-0 Cardinals. Well, the Mets made short work of former teammate Al Ryder Thursday at Dolphin Stadium. He was terrific against the Mets Saturday. Seven innings of work, three hits, only one run. Much different story Thursday night. Second inning. Mets down 1-0. The bases are full for Doug Mankiewicz. Right. Who loses one. Oh. Deep fly ball to right. That's a grand slam. The first in his career. Part of a seven-run second inning. Ryder lasted only three innings, six hits, eight earned runs. Now the bottom of the fourth, meanwhile, Pedro Martinez was cruising. Gets Carlos Delgado swinging, and then the next batter, Miguel Cabrera, he rings him up. So Pedro lights out once again. Three hits, one earned run, eight strikeouts. Top of the fifth, the Mets leading eight to one runner on first, and Carlos Beltran, deep fly ball to right. That's going to go. Beltran with the three-run job, or his third homer of the year, I should say, as the Mets go on to win 10 to one. But getting back to Pedro, since allowing three runs on three hits, in the first inning of his Mets debut back on opening day, Martinez has allowed just eight hits and four runs in his last 28 frames. Opponents hitting a not-so-robust 087 against him in those 28 innings. Royals and Twins, some drama. Top nine, Mike Sweeney on second for Angel Barroa. Barroa going to left. Lou Ford throwing home. Here comes Sweeney. They wave him in. Mike Redmond, boom. Royals up 9-8. Take another look. Redmond would have to be taken out of the game with bruised ribs. Absolutely creamed by Sweeney. A solid, clean play. Bottom nine. First and third. Jock Jones. Big spot. Down a run. Bouncer. Tony Graffadino can't get it. Torrey Hunter comes in. That ties it at nine. Bottom ten now. They're loaded for Lou Ford. Lou. Up the middle. 
Twins win 10-9. Minnesota takes both games of the two-game set. Joe Nathan got the win after striking out the side in the top of the 10. Well, the Yanks and Jays in Toronto, 3-0 rookie Gustavo Chassin is making his home debut. He's been pretty solid in the beginning of the season. Top of the fourth scoreless game one on, and Gary Sheffield gets to him. The double into left center field, and Bernie Williams racing home with the first run of the game, 1-0 in favor of the Yanks. Now bottom six, Jays down 4-3. They are juiced. Felix Rodriguez facing Shea Hillenbrand. And he gets out of the jam. Rounds into the 6-4 situation, so Mike Messina is loving what he sees out there as the Yankees trying to bail him out. Ninth inning, Mariano Rivera in the game facing Hillebrand. Pops him up. Now three Yankees converge on it, and Tino Martinez is the guy who has to make the diving catch out there. Nobody wanted it. Top play nominee. Later in the inning, Rivera facing Alex Rios. Two on, two gone the situation, and Rios Rounds out 4-3, so Rivera picks up his third save of the year as the Yankees go on to record the victory, the final score from Toronto, 4-3. I don't believe in fortune-telling, but for those of you who do, we have a treat. Going for the trifecta here. We'll see if Teixeira hits it back to him or if he blasts it out of here. Whoa, you called that one. Yeah, that's or not... Well, I don't know. I think I did. Yeah, I yes, did. You did. Home run to Shera. <laughs> nice call. That's the worst home run call in the history of the United <laughs> I, States. I messed you up. I'm sorry. <laughs> now, now, don't be so hard on yourself. <laughs> Top of the ninth, Rangers down 3-2. Danny Baez facing Gary Matthews Jr. with runners at first and third, two outs. Pinch hitter is lined out to center field. Crawford with a cash D-raise win 3-2. Red Sox in Baltimore. Jay Payton impersonating hitting oh. coach Ron Jackson, who was suspended after an ejection. On April 14, bottom four, Rafael Palmeiro on first. Jay Gibbons doubles into the right field corner. They're going to wave Palmeiro. Watch Trot Nixon overthrow the cutoff man, Mark Bellhorn. But the throw goes right to Kevin Millar. And Millar's relay, a bullet to Jason Veritek. And it's in time. Matt Clement is out of the inning. Let's go to the eighth. Miguel Tejada leading everybody in RBIs to first. Millar is over there. Tejada dives around the tag. He's safe. Might have gone a little out of the baseline, and Millar may have gotten some jersey, but it's first and second. Still two out for guess who, Tito. It's Sammy. Matt Clement tossed eight shutout innings, struck out seven. He gets to 2-0. Oh. The Red Sox win one zip. They sit alone atop the AL East. They've won seven of the last eight games. Nationals 4-2 on their seven-game homestand, which finished up Thursday afternoon against the Braves. Top nine, they're up 1-0. Chad Cordero trying to close this thing down, but Marcus Giles singles to right. After a walk to Chipper, they bring up Johnny Estrada. He singles. They got to hold everybody up, though, so the bases are loaded. Cordero in a jam, facing Brian Jordan. Bobby Cox looking on. Jordan going down. Next up, Cordero gets Adam LaRoche. Next up, we're all Mondesi. Cordero to Mondesi, to short. Christian Guzman, backhanded stop. The throw, not so much. Guzman, second best fielding percentage among AL shortstops last year, brings in two runs. The Braves lead 2 1. Another look. Guzman's throwing hand drags in the mud, leaving Cordero with a second blown save. Bad conditions out there, but they got this game in anyway on getaway day. And Atlanta wins 2 1, so the Nationals go 4 and 3 on their first ever homestand at RFK record in baseball 12 and 2 best start since 55 but bottom one Ryan Klesko singles to center off Scott Erickson Mark Loretta comes in and the Padres have a 2 nothing lead Erickson would allow five runs on nine hits in four and two third bottom five it's Klesko again and again he gets to Erickson doubling the right center Mark Loretta scores Brian Giles hustling into third Klesko in three for three drove in two and it's three nothing San Diego Xavier and 80, pinch running for Klesko. Next up, it's Ramon Hernandez. Broken bat, single to right, Hernandez three for four. Padres win 6-1 behind Adam Eaton, who gave up just one run on five hits in five. His second win, San Diego snaps the Dodgers, eight-game winning streak. Former teammate Jason Schmidt. How good are these guys? Well, Schmidt and Ortiz with more wins over the last two years than anybody in the majors, 37 of those. How to go for these two on Thursday night? Let's find out. Top of the fourth inning, a two-on situation. Schmidt facing Chad Tracy. And Tracy rips him deep to center field and gone. Third home run of the year for Tracy and the D-backs leading three to nothing. Now to the bottom of the sixth, Ortiz facing Lance Negro. Joe Negro's kid. 
deep to left and out. Second homer for Negro this season and the Giants down three to two. Well, they tie it up and they would go to extras and in the 13th, Hello. I want to wake up. This you don't want to miss. Bottom of the 13th died. Bases loaded for Davey Cruz who rips it in the left. Game over. Giants win by a final count of four to three in 13. Check the Necro kid for an Emory board. <laughs> Indians in Anaheim. Jared Washburn didn't go too well. Top one, they're loaded. Jose Hernandez unloads, clears the bases with a double three nothing tribe as Washburn is whacked for five runs on 10 hits in five innings. Cleveland had a 5-4 lead in the ninth. L.A. of Anaheim trying to come back. Vlad Guerrero chases a bad one for Bob Wakeman, so there are two outs. Cleveland just about has this thing wrapped up. Next up, Garrett Anderson. And it's getting away from him. Bloop single to left. Darren Erstad, two outs running on the pitch. They wave him in, and that ties it up at five. Anderson, three for five. We go to extras. Bottom 10, Orlando Cabrera from Jason Davis. Cabrera, three for five, his fourth career walk-off home run. Angels win at 6-5. Cabrera has two home runs with the Angels. Both have come in extra innings. One on for Mark Kotze. Hammer job. Two-run big fly to right his second of the year, staking the A's to a 3-0 lead. More than enough for Rich Harden, who's off to a terrific start this season. Only one earned run allowed and 13 in the third innings worked. And here goes Harden. Jeremy Reed, there he goes, swinging. Richie Sexton, get out. And tell, take Miguel Olivo with you. Harden getting Reed again, swinging. Then Sexton going down for a second time, this time admiring. Raul Labanez goes down, swinging Harden. Seven innings of work, no earned runs. He struck out eight as Oakland wins 3 up. Looking to move to 12-4 and four on the season, visiting Detroit. Mark Burling on the hill, bottom of the fifth inning, two to one. And it's Carlos Guillen lifting one into the left center field gap. Nobody's going to catch that one. Nook Logan scores, and Guillen racing into third with the triple. He reached base in all four bats in the game, three for three with a walk. Three to one Tigers right there. Now to the top of the seventh, three, two Tigers, second and third for Scott Posednik, who rips the Jamie Walker pitch into right. A.J. Prezinski in, Craig Monroe coming home. Joe Creedy's going to be safe. White Sox leading it four to three. Now the bottom of the eighth, two on, one out. Dustin Hermanson facing Dimitri Young, who rounds to second, starting the four, six, three double play. So the White Sox win it by a final count of four to three. Burley improves to three and one. The White Sox are 12 and four. Yes, indeed, the White Sox are white hot these days with that 12 and four record after 16 games for the first time since 1935. For those of you who don't have calculators handy, that would be 70 years. Why the success? Pitching, pitching, pitching. The starters are nine and three, a 2.91 ERA. Their starters lead the American League in earned run average and in innings pitch. And while they may be playing some small ball, how about Paul Canerco? He's been playing long ball, seven home runs, and it leads to major leagues.